I have it at 3 o'clock, so let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. All right. Like that? That's Very nice. In the hammer. Uh, you want to go ahead and do a uh, roll call? Someone? Mike Kammerer. Here. Joe Stacy. Here. Bruce Hendricks. Here. Dan Palmer. Here. John Getz. All right. It looks like we have a quorum. So that being said, we'll move on to the approval of the September. September 27th, 2018 meet, meeting minutes. Does anyone have any changes or alterations of any sort that need to be done to those minutes or any comments on those minutes? <clears throat> I, I, I kind of wanted to get a definition of shovel ready. Uh, Dan can give you that definition, actually, because I'm asking the same thing, kind of. <laughs> Shovel ready means the plans are basically ready to go and you, you're basically ready to go out the bid. So you have to have a lot of the fund, grant funding will, will be that way where um, they're looking for a, you know, projects that can get turned around really quick. So that's why we like the West Bartlett Trail is basically ready to go. We're just trying to get the funding for it squared away. Okay. I would call that one shovel ready because the design is done and it's as soon as we get the funding worked out. This this ID in our Illinois Department of Natural Resources, is that, that a grant you could possibly get if they have excess funds? Well, I'll get to it. Actually, yeah, we have good news on that project. So yeah. it's gonna start right. next week actually. If it's if it's shovel ready, we might snag it right away if it's not. So all the thing we have in the air is shovel ready now. Sorry. Okay. That's what we want. Okay. Uh, so I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from November 27, 2018. A motion. Second. I'll second it. All right. Motion made by Bruce Hendricks, second by Joe Stacy. Uh, we have a vote. Joe Stacy? Uh, yes. Bruce Hendricks? Yes. Dan Palmer? Abstain. Mike Kammer? Yes. I believe that passes then. It does. Okay. All right, moving right along. Are, unless, is there any other comments here about the uh, minutes? Apparently not. And let's move on to public comments. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the uh, committee? All right. It's enthusiasm overwhelming. Yeah, that's yeah, so great. It's great. Spring break. All right. We're moving on to old business, new business, and I'll turn this over to staff at this point in time with the status report on the bike path maintenance. Right. Um, we, if you've seen the work on Stearns Road, uh, which is associated with our DuPage water uh, transition, we've torn up a good portion of that bike path. And we're, we're currently looking at uh, getting pricing from the contractor um, to replace the bike path from bittersweet all the way to the west end, which would be like near Ken Circle. Um, big portion of that's part of that project, but there's gaps in between that they didn't touch. I'm trying to see how much that would be to just do the whole thing instead of having a piecemeal thing. So the plan would be to resurface that whole stretch um, that entire length. And then in the capital program this year, we are looking to do start doing the ComEd bike path with village crews. And uh, we'll probably have to contract out uh, the one that's over by uh, the school just north of Stearns by uh, Centennial. There's that bike path that's in there that's in need. But that one's a little tighter for our guys to be able to do, so we might farm that out. North of Stern, Struckman, north of Struckman, or Stearns? Uh, Stearns, just west of Centennial School. It's oh. kind of north in the oh. pond area. Off of Wallace Court? Yeah, it comes off of Wallace and heads towards the school. That's the main. Um, I'm also looking at possibly seal coating the path that we just completed last year, which would be the one from South Bartlett and Stearns that heads along the bike, uh, the pipeline down to Struckman. 
I'm looking to seal coat that portion. Do we have the uh, capabilities of doing that ourselves with the seal coating? No, not really. We're not geared up for that. Um, contractors that have it, they they do it a lot quicker. We would, I mean, we'd be doing it like a driveway if we were doing someone's driveway, and I don't think that's the best way to do it. So. Have we always seal coated paths, or is that something new we're trying to do? We haven't. Um, not. We're looking at trying it out. Um, we're actually looking at doing a seal similar to what we've been doing on some of our roadways. It's supposed to keep that uh, pavement uh, a lot longer. I'm hoping with a bike path it would, you know, extend it even longer. Um, corrective asphalt materials is the group that we've been working with, so they're going to be doing some uh, roads this fall. So I'm going to look at seeing if they can do that stretch when they're in town for that. Is there any? Uh, do they have any statistics or stats on? Um I would imagine that's since you've not done that before, is there a period of time that they can prove that it keeps the path from deteriorating, you know, uh, or is there a period of time if you're testing that where you'll know if it's working versus not? On the bike paths, yes. I don't know that a lot of communities, some communities have started, that's why I started looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, on roadways, we definitely have the experience on roadways and it's yeah. definitely helping their life. I would only assume on a bike path that it would help that as well. You know, is the ADA requirement on a path, does that have something to do with the width, the grade, or? Uh, width, no, but uh, on the grade, definitely. That's why you'll see more and more at intersections, they put the concrete pad with the truncated domes to meet ADA requirements, even on bike paths. Um, slopes on bike paths still have to meet ADA requirements as well. But as far as the width, that's more of a standard um, standard width right now is 10 feet. That's on, the new bike path that you're talking about putting on sterns running up to... Uh, uh, we won't necessarily be able to get a full 10 foot along that whole stretch. We're going to match. If we can widen it out, we will. Um, but we won't necessarily go 10 feet. But if you get grant funding, you're going to be required to build it at 10 feet. Okay. Are, we, are we looking to get grant funding right there or not? Not for Stearns, no. Stearns, okay. All right. So the path, the most obvious path we have in Barlow, the one that runs by the horse farm down to the library along Main Street. That one there, could that be maintained or resurfaced without a conflict with ADA? That's a very <laughs> visible used path. That, yes. And that one is, does not meet ADA for driving uh, <coughs> down it. So that's going to be a challenging one. And of course, the width isn't where it would be either. So it becomes a big project if you start doing that. That's why we've been kind of waiting. That'd probably be one that we'd be working with the park district on. And we've got the forest preserve district easement that we need to work out with them as well. Um, so that one's on the list. It's just factoring what, what we actually can do and what we are required to do has to be determined. That's such a nice path. I mean, it's got some character to it. It goes by the woods and stuff, but it needs it needs patching, you know, and work to smooth it out. I was just wondering if uh, that path can be maintained just on a local level without worrying about compliance, you know, with ADA on that particular path. And I keep thinking that we're thinking about that path, having to be bulldozed and make it a nice level thing of a particular grade, just repave it the way it runs. Right. Who would ever notice? But it'd be such a, it's a kind of an eyesore now for people that are on it all the time. I kind agree. Of reflection of yep. everything. Is there any chance that the uh, Forest Preserve or the Park District would have available grants to go for that section that could be used for that section of the uh, bike path, or do you know? I think when you introduce the grants is when it becomes <laughs> troublesome. If we were to do a local job, you might be able to get away with. Yeah, um, I'm Jessica Ortega with the Forest Preserve District. We, we don't really, the Forest Preserve doesn't provide grants. So, um, but certainly, you know, I've heard the bike path grant through the IDNR it has a lot of funding this year. And I mean, there's other opportunities that maybe Bartlett staff could look into. So it would be mostly just put into your budget for that, for your section of that bike path if we were going to do something with it? Um, I guess I'm not, 
Sorry. I don't really know exactly which section you're that, talking about. The, the forest preserve is not, not involved in any of it. It's, I thought I that the forest preserve right in front of they, Well, the county has given us an easement along South Bartlett Road for the little portion that is uh, forest preserve. So even though there's a forest preserve right there, they're not they don't not responsible for any of the bike path. Right. I see. Okay. It's actually shared. My mistake. Park district. <laughs> Share with. We them. can. We would welcome them. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to be to a section of bike path in front of your forest preserve? Really nice. Sign up and say it's yours. <laughs> That's right. So you said it's shared with the uh, park district. And that's from the horse farm to where, like, kind of goes to the rec center. It kind of turns. Pretty much all along that whole that whole west side there, down to Stearns Road. Down to Stearns, so that whole section, past the library and all that. Mm -hmm. hmm. So we would have to. I don't know if either of you know, but if you maintain, I look at it as like when we touch sidewalk. When you touch sidewalk, you got to meet ADA. So. I'm assuming when you touch bike path, you got to meet ADA. I'd, I'd have to look into that, but. Okay. Right. So we, we can look into that and find out. But I agree, if we could just grind it, put new asphalt down, that's what. Well, it, we would be looking at. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't uh, Apple Blossom Run use that trail? Doesn't it? I mean, the two don't we do two runs a year here? Um, and don't both of those come off the path that goes from like uh, baseball parks to Barlow Road, and it turns up? I mean, I, I think, and it's it is heavily used. It it, it and it is, you know, and if you run in early morning when it's dark, it's a little, it's, it's, it's a little dangerous. I mean, it's not you know, it's got some. It needs work, <laughs> but it's a pretty visible path and well, used. No, it's just heavily, it's just used a lot. Yeah. Well, it might be something to put on the radar as you know something future that we should be at least we're doing all the other things we're trying to get going, but we might as well be saying, well, this is another area. Maybe we are what already have. I, I think know. it is on the list. I don't remember which year though, but yeah. What's that? I think it is on our maintenance list. I don't remember which year, but. I'm sure it's on the, we can take a look at it and see if, All right. bump it up. Anything else, Dan, on bike path maintenance? I think that covers it. Can I just add one more quick, I just extended that. That path goes to the horse farm driveway, right? It kind of, cro it kind of crosses over the driveway that goes into the horse farm, then there's still path there. That path's pretty bad. It, what's the street there, Amherst or uh, what, I can't? Amherst Meadow. Amherst had, um, at Meadow that goes along the horse farm. So that path goes to that, and I'm not sure if that's a, is that part of the path or is that the sidewalk? You know. Um, I'll have to take a look at it. Kelly O'Brien Park District um, about getting some additional lighting or actually just getting lighting down there. So kind of um, following up with your comment on that is highly used and we've had a couple of phone calls come in and just asking and suggesting to put some additional lighting. So I was shared with them that I would bring it to the committee. Yeah, I think that, that, that it's potentially, I mean, it's a safety thing. If you get someone walking at night or in the morning and there's kids that leave the swimming pool in, in the summertime at 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night when it's getting dark and they walk by there, that's a big forest preserve area there. It, it's, it can be a potential safety thing, so. Let's move along to the DuPage Forest Preserve District update. Okay, again, I'm Jessica Ortega with the Forest Preserve District of DuPage County. So um, I don't have too much of an update um, for the trail along Munger Road from the Woodland Hills neighborhood. So we're still waiting on direction from IDOT and IDNR about how to proceed with the rusty patched bumblebee habitat. <laughs> Um, so we're as hopeful as anyone that we'll be get going on that pretty soon. Um, 
especially since you know we have grant funding and you have to spend that within a certain amount of time. Um, I did want to bring to the committee that um, we just awarded a contract with uh, Traffic Control and Protection, who I believe just moved to Bartlett recently. Um, they're a sign contractor. They'll be putting in some interpretive signs over at the state park, at James Pate Phillips State Park for us, so interpretive signs. We've got four new ones going in there. Um, there's some there now that are pretty old and outdated, so looking forward to seeing those go in sometime this summer. And that's all I have. The signs, I'm sorry. Interpretive signs, so they're going to talk about wetlands and bends and just kind of letting people know what it is that they're looking at out there at the state park. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee to the Forest Preserve District? I, I did have a question. Is, is the Hawk Hollow Forest Preserve that one crushed stone path that goes all the way to the new bridge over County Farm Road. Is that Forest Preserve property there? Is it possible for Bartlett to have an event and that what would be entailed to authorize like a commonly used path for a bicyclist through there, like off trail riding and for enjoyment and perhaps an annual event of some sort? Yeah, um, that would probably fall within a special use permit, so um, could get you in touch with our community services and education department, and they'd be able to, you know, find out from you what kind of event you're looking at, what kind of impacts your schedule, all that kind of stuff, and work through the special use permit process. Do you know that there's people that kayak now, and I think it's great that they do mm -hmm. in the in the creek that runs through the uh, in the north side of that. That's pretty cool that they can do that, but I don't mm -hmm. know if the Forest Reserve really has given that okay, or just unaware of that, or? Um, yeah, I, I don't know that there's really a restriction on where you can put your your watercraft, your personal watercraft, as long as it's post, not posted that you can't. Okay. Yeah, I did. <laughs> a friend of mine and I did it probably five years ago at least. We, we went in at Struckman. And we rode it all the way down uh, into Wheaton, and uh, we, it's amazing. We went through Winfield. Uh, we took it all the way. Is it Grays, Grays Mill Road? We took it all the way to there. It was kind of cool. It's amazing where it goes. And you, you drive by that more, more than you know. <laughs> like even downtown Winfield where the hospital is, it literally goes right by that. How deep is that thing? It varies. I mean, some points we got to get out and kind of walk a little bit. Um, and then, you know, maybe it's three feet deep. It just depends. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> right. But anyway, with regard to that event, we just lost mm -hmm. our kickstand classic through mm -hmm. Transportation Alliance, and yeah. I was kind of pining for Bartlett to have something. Oh, yeah, that happens mm -hmm. in Bartlett with regards to bicycling. Now we have nothing, really. So. Yeah, I mean, if you want to uh, get your information to Christy, she can reach out to me, and we can put you in touch with the right people. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, next would be the Park District update. Kelly O'Brien, Park District. Um, don't really have an update, just kind of shared some of the information that was called on behalf of the Park District about the lighting, but other than that, yeah. really no update at this time, unless there's any questions for me. I, I was wondering about that tree in front of the library. There's that one holy branch that kind of looks like it's made to support power lines. Okay. And that one kind of it looks like it's there to support the power lines, or it looks like it's right for a purpose, or it kind of blocks a stoplight when there's trees on it. It's when probably you're... DuPage County, I have a feeling, isn't it? Who... Or maybe ComEd, come out and look at DuPage. it on the lines. It's on the, on the line there, yeah. yeah. That's somebody else, yeah. Yeah. I noticed they got the tennis courts cranking over there. Oh, yeah. It looks like they resurfaced those, it looks nice. The tennis court, yeah, we did that last, uh, last fall. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. And moving along to item D, grant updates. I bet this is under Tyler's category here. There is. All right. So that um, first one, the IDNR grant, um, it's a little more complicated than that. So. I think we talked about last time how a state representative asked us if we had any shovel-ready projects. 
to submit. And so we sent in the bike path links that c come through Glen Kohler into the state park and also connect to Lakewood Mills or what would be constructed. And we've made it through the first round of that and it's looking like it will be funded. It's not official yet, but all signs point to yes. And so the grant manager said, if you're gonna do it, start now because there's a little bit of an um, construction issue with IDNR due to some endangered species, mostly turtles. Um, there can be no construction between the dates of April 15th and August 15th. And if we're gonna get this funding through this grant, work has to be done by June 30th. So we do have a contractor that's been awarded. We've laid out the path where the general direction will be. We've spoken with IDNR, they're all good with it. So it's looking like getting mobilized, ready for construction on the IDNR portion will begin sometime next week. And then as far as the Glen Kohler portion goes, because we have more time with that, they're gonna wait till it dries out more. And I've been talking with the Park District and the Little League on that to give them heads up on what that scheduling is looking like. So if you have any questions on that one, it kind of happened really fast once it all started moving because of the time crunch. <coughs> it looks like we're gonna be able to move forward with it and get it going. Yep. It's great. Okay. I just feel my guess. Sometimes I lose my bearings on these paths where they're all at, you know. So it'd be nice if we had a map when we're all talking and kind of point to what's going on. We can do that for next time. <coughs> okay. IDOT phase. And so for the train station and bike shelter um, stuff, there hasn't been too much movement on that just yet. We've all, every community that's involved with doing that larger purchase, it's, um, we've all sent in letters stating that we understand Elmhurst is going to be the one purchasing everything, and then we will fund them back. But there hasn't been too much word other than that, as of yet. Okay. That's probably a capital improvement by Elmer's, I think, when they buy them, and that's their tax dealio, and then, then they sell the equipment off to other cities. How many cities are, are they paying for it? Just Bartlett? And uh, there, yeah, there's a lot. I can't remember how many exactly. That's not important. I just, it's amazing that they're popping for all that. And then, well, they're just kind of the head yeah. agency, and then all the communities will reimburse mm -hmm. Elmhurst for. We don't get it for free. Yeah. yeah. There had to be yeah. one. One lead agency one lead for grants. Agency and then, so Elmhurst said they'll do it. Mm -hmm. And then we just pay them back. Our staff will be installing them. They've been purchased already? They're Not yet. Not that I know of. Okay. They have to go off the bid. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because each community, for the most part, wants different shelters. So they're... It'll be coming up shortly, I believe. But I, I was always real proud of these bike racks in Pensacola. You know, they're kind of cool. <laughs> Those old standard bike racks, the gray galvanized metal racks you know just you don't even want to put your bike on those things it's can we get them painted well, i think they'll be that what kind of material is that i'm not sure which one i think ours were black yeah they're the black, black ones we went with they're going to be they're not just the standard yeah galvanized pipe yeah well they're black And moving on from there, the RTA grant, um, I wish I had better news with this one because it sounded very promising. The RTA actually called us and recommended us to apply for this grant for the uh, bike path in front of the village church. 
And then, so we applied, we made it through the first round and then they called and said, unfortunately, it didn't make the final cut. So, wish I had better news on that one, but I do not. <laughs> not getting anything for that in front of Village Church then? Uh, not through the RTA grant. Right. But are we slated to still do something with it in the future or not? That drainage, that, uh, that swell there? I will be actually, in, I'll just talk about that one now, the Invest in Cook grant. That actually, that's the one we got two years ago through the Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways. Um, they started it a few years ago. We were awarded the design engineering on that one, <clears throat> on that project in the inaugural year of it. We applied last year for construction funding, even though design wasn't finished. And almost all of their grant funding last year went to the city of Chicago. So <coughs> this year, the, we actually just submitted for it two weeks ago. Everything was due last Friday. And then um, this year, the differences are before there were no match requirements. Now for construction, there's a one-to-one. -one. So we'll have to come up with half of it. Okay. And right now that half is looking like, because the, uh, the design is all done, the estimate is coming at, half would be about 190, 190,000. And then in conjunction with that, I've applied for the ComEd Green Region grant, which would be $10,000 for the same project, but would help at least cut it down a little bit. So hopefully Cook County shares the wealth a little better than they did last year with, as far as hitting the suburbs a little more. Have we budgeted for that then, if with that grant being pulled out and with the, the hopes mm -hmm. that we have the grant, do we have the budget to do, to, to complete that project? Yeah, it's been in the capital improvement plan for a while, and now... We have had that in there. Funds. I believe it would come out of MFT funds, our share. What? MFT. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the church did their part of it. I mean, they were supposed. It was that something that they had to do as part of that, where they changed that. Oh, they just that's something they wanted to do. Yeah, that was just something they wanted to do. It just kind of worked out at the time that. Okay. We were hoping to be doing construction at the same time. But I'm hoping this year it goes better. We were actually the first awarded municipality to send in all the reports and everything like that. So hopefully that shows them that we're serious about this. And we okay. So if there's no more questions on that one. The, uh, some more good news. Uh, the LTA grant is through CMAP. It actually, uh, they come in and help with different plans and stuff like this. And this one would include a bike plan. And so we applied for it back in January. Uh, I think February. No, no, it was later than that. Applied for those over the summer. Are you sure? For all, all, yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, and we made it through the initial round, and then we were approached by CMAP asking if we'd want to partner up with Streamwood because they applied for the same thing. And so we talked about it, and we were like, yeah, we'll partner with Streamwood to do this bike path plan together. And so now it's recommended for award, and if it's approved, it'll be approved on April 10th at their board meeting. Okay. And again, what will we get out of it? What would? A uh, bike path plan. Bike path plan. So it was something we were planning on doing in-house, 
but if we can get an outside agency that has more experience doing it, they're basically going to help us. And it's useful because since we're in partnership with Streamwood, Lake Street being the division between the two towns, it really helps coordinate our efforts on how we make connections. Okay. As far as green updates on these updates, Tyler. I'm always looking for new ones. I'm always, every time I hear of something. <laughs> the bypass signage stuff that we're going to do on our own, it's not here. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do some signage on our own, but we're going to, I think the bike path plan typically the, that also puts in like wayfinding signage and stuff like information like that, which is something we were wanting to do. So even the next item on our agenda was talking about on street routes. I think we're going to kind of hold off until we start doing it as an overall plan um, as part of the LTA grant. So, but it will, it's more than just making a map and lines on it. I mean, it's an actual document that we'd follow kind of how Wayne Township had an LTA grant to do theirs, which you may remember from when we first started a year or two ago. So it's doing something like that similar. So, moving on then to the, do we, we can just dis continue the discussion regarding the adding the on-street bike routes to the bike math, basically, that's what we are just saying. Right. So, um, all right, new projects that include bike paths. Um, the Village Board approved Galleria um, on Army Trail Road, which includes a 10-foot wide bike path along Army Trail. Um, so... That's exciting because that's something that was one of the plans, routes that we had wanted to do in the future. So we finally have our first, we'll be getting our first segment of that bike path completed. Um, there is also coming up before the village board um, in April and for vinyl vote in May is a project on Stearns and Munger where the existing uh, farm, farm is. Um, that includes a 10 foot bike path um, that would go from weather, from Linfield Lane west to Munger Road. So the, that is a part of what the developer has proposed to install is the roadway improvements. So it's exciting to get a side path in there and have get an outside agent, get someone else to pay for it, not the village. So we don't have to worry about grants or anything like that. So that's going to be a nice segment completed. Who's the developer there? Um, the, the west or east side of the it's, northeast, right? It's the northeast corner of Stearns and Munger. Okay. So right in front of the um, business park. That's business park. Business park people. Right. right. Yeah, two speculative buildings. There's some controversy with it right now. Right. If it gets approved. It's, <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Subdivision to the east. Do they need any variances? Do the actual builders need variances? I don't know. It's, I, I think it's been zoned for this since 2002. It's being, I'm pretty it's being rezoned. It's currently zoned office research and multifamily, uh, which was a carryover from the original 1978. Uh, complain about the multifamily and so this, the future land use plan has called for it going mixed use business park since 2002. You don't happen to know when that subdivision was built, do you? Um, it was annexed and zoned in 1988. Yeah. So the, proper, the property in question was originally part of the annexation in 1966. Um, it was rezoned in 1967 to manufacturing. Is when they built the houses back in there? No, no the houses were 88. the 88. 88, okay. Yeah. So this property has been in the village significantly longer than Weathersfield subdivision. But it hasn't been zoned as a uh, industrial because we didn't have that industrial park back there, right? Correct. Okay. Well, there was industrial back there. It just didn't go down that far south? It didn't include this property. So this property has gone through just... Um, originally, it was zoned manufacturing in the 60s, then it was rezoned to the office research and multifamily in 78, 
At that point in time, the south side of the street of Stearns was anticipated to be residential development. And then with the condemnation of the for, by the Forest Preserve District, um, that kind of changed what we foresaw the north side of the street going. And, with the, and at that point in the 90s, they were thinking we'd have the Fox Valley Freeway. So they were looking at even doing retail there, but really the loss of the houses, the potential houses on the south side, really affected what the future land use uh, for, the, for, this, for the Stearns and Munger site was. Okay. So did we cover all four of them? You said there were four potential new bike paths? No, just the two. Just two. Okay. All right. <coughs> okay. Any questions for staff on the new projects? Um, no, but I forgot to get this in under old business. Okay. Uh, just 59 and 20, I see the bike path under 20. And, and help me understand again, because it's been a while since we talked about it. Where is that going to, it's going to connect with Streamwood up to the north there looks like right. and where does it go to to the south it stops at bay tree okay so but, i think that people can get to bay tree and then get through yes okay that's one of the places that now we're thinking it'd be nice to have an on-street marked route just signed route not striped but to kind of bring people to figure out once you get to bay tree if someone's coming from say streamwood like they're actually going to our downtown looks like they're actually going to finish that project i know This other new project that you just had the approval for, that's that's kind of up near 59 and Army Trail, is that right? Is that, Correct. Is that just east of the Starbucks and all that over there? Um, and then, so if you go to the far east end of that project, that bike path will just stop. There's no other bike path there, right? Right. Okay. <coughs> I notice also on the plan it says uh, bicycle spaces there. Um, I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think the bike path to the to the west where the Starbucks there's a pipe there's a path there by the Starbucks too or is that connecting to anything? I don't believe there there is not anything uh, there currently. This okay. wasn't we didn't originally call for having um, bike paths on Army Trail, but now that's something that has changed during our planning, yeah. and so we're starting to make developments do that. I think the uh, IDOT has a project at Army Trail in Fifty Nine. I think they did include it. Yeah. We got in the future, but nothing's current. Yeah, I mean, it makes, I mean eventually, long term. I mean, the, the high schools to the to the east there, <laughs> kids could go walk, take that path, and go to Starbucks or you know, right. So, makes sense. We did just get notification that the speed limit on that side, our Army Trail in Fifty Nine, has been reduced five miles an hour. I guess. <clears throat> Something, I guess, for the bikers if you're going to be biking down that median or the mm -hmm. side. I don't know what to call the side. The shoulders. The shoulders. Um, I guess if cars aren't going as fast, they won't hit you as hard, I suppose. <laughs> okay. All right. And that covers old and new business, unless there's any other questions. I was wondering, it's, it's, there's a likelihood that the police department's going to be getting a, uh, a drone. And I wondered if it would have to talk to the police department if it would be a chance that we could borrow it to map out and to actually take aerial fo photos of, the, of all the existing bike paths in Bartlett and be able to have that for us to see and to kind of visualize. I think that might be kind of a nice reference to be able to offer and maybe even to have it somehow in our, in our Bartlett uh, you know, um, I don't know, website or something of that nature uh, where we could, you know, show places people could go from an aerial standpoint i don't know if i don't know if there's that crossover we can actually use it once they get it but <laughs> there are a lot of communities that use the drones to do projects such as that to highlight um bike paths even to do like water tower inspections you can yeah, fly that up there right yeah right so we should sit we shall see all right any other questions for staff I always thought, I always wanted a bumper sticker or something that says, I should have rode my bike. You know, I ride my bike to the post office, you know, instead of drive my car over there. You know, I just, I just, I'm so proud. I'm embarrassed. I'm so proud. I 
Everybody else takes their you know, Cadillac SUV over there, you know. Well, everyone should be encouraged somehow or another to take their bike on short runs through the city. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, Terry. <laughs> but my sister-in-law's got a brand new bike. She bought it 10 years ago and it's hanging on a hook in the garage. She's never been on it. You know? mm -hmm. And I don't know, not that the, any type that she needs any more prompting than I give her. She, you know, she used the exercise for sure, but I don't know, it just seems like, you know, when I think of it, I think, well, I'm glad I thought of it, you know, to take the bike there. I don't know what resources we have to make people aware that, you know, I can take the bike to post up or cool or whatever. I'll bring that up at the next, uh, we have a green team, Tyler and I are on. No, oh, no, you're not on it. Sarah's on it now. And I can bring that up. Maybe we can do something where people could just even post, send stuff into us and say, like, I, I rode my bike from here to here. And just little stuff like that that maybe we could put out on Facebook that's pretty simple. Facebook or even in a, one of the newsletters, like, hey, don't forget to ride your bike. You yeah. Know? I don't know. Something of that nature. Okay. Uh, moving on to the meeting dates. I do have a concern with the December meeting date, even if it's 19th. I just don't, we, we had it after Christmas, that doesn't work. A lot of times people are on vacation and gone. The 19th, everybody's preparing for Christmas. So I don't know if that's such a good time. So I'd be in favor of going with the January 9th, unless there's objections some way, or so, for some reason I'm not thinking of. Sounds good to me. Yeah. We I, need to uh, authorize that since it's gonna deviate from the normal schedule. Yeah, we would need a vote on that. I will move that we move the fourth quarter meeting of the Bike and Run Commission to January 9th from December 19th. And I just put it in my calendar, so I approve. A <laughs> second. So we have a motion by Dan Palmer and a second by Joe Stacy to move the fourth quarter meeting to January 9th. Um, can we have a vote on that? I guess if we need one or not, do we need a We vote? can just all in favor. We can do it all. all in favor. Aye. 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 Any? I don't think there's any opposition. All right, and that would bring us to adjournment unless there's something pertinent that the committee or staff has left out and wants to address now. If I not, just, I just had one thing. I can Very imagine, I can imagine you would. Jesus. Go right ahead. You got my paycheck yet? I do. Would you like to be paid again? I just want, as a reminder, when we talk to other people in Bartlett, when, they, when there are signs you know, or on these roads, give a birth, you know, us that example to give birth to the bicycle riders, kind of, if it's possible to exaggerate it, you know, let them know we are giving them birth, that's kind of a catching trend. You know, on some of these two-lane highways, you can't do it. What you gotta do is slow down until there's room to give them birth or press through there and go tangent to the rider. But all of us would certainly be doing that. You know, we're driving our cars to give wide berth to the bike riders. And I was some kind of gesture other than, you know, out of the window. I get kind of crazy, like, you know. Like, on my arm. Mm -hmm. Or be out on your bike. Someday you'll have a body like mine. I find myself sticking to uh, bike paths more than streets because it's the texting thing that's got me going. Oh, that's scary. It's yeah. Out. All right. I would... Uh, Ask for a uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I'll second it. So we have a motion to adjourn and second. We call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>